<sighs> good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. Wake up, wake up, wake up. It is time for the Only Your Now show and it is Relationship Wednesday. So come on in, invite a friend and let me know, is your cup full or what? Let's wake up, wake up, wake up. Come on in, come on in everybody. It's time for the Own Your Now show. We're gonna start off with a little bit of Harold Melvin and the Blue Notes with Wake Up, Wake Up. Good morning, come on in, good morning. Good morning, Karen, good morning. How are you today? Is your cup full? Good morning, Erica. Come on in, fill your cups, share, share, share. We got so much to talk about. It's Relationship Wednesday. We have Dr. Marty K. Casey, Peace Ambassador. She's going to talk to us about some things. We got a lot to talk about today. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning, Maylene. Come on in. Share. Invite a friend. Let me know, ladies. Is your cups half full or half empty? I have my cup. It's empty. It's, it's empty. My cup is empty. I need to fill it up. Whew, it's Wednesday, but we need to wake up. Wake up. Wake up. Wake up, everybody. Good morning, Ellie. Good morning, Cheryl. The world. Woo. Wake up, y'all. I just had to start off with this message because there's a lot that's going on. And if we don't address it, I don't know what this world is going to look like. So I hope that you guys are ready to, to be empowered, to be uplifted, and to be inspired because um, we got a lot that we need to focus on, right? So wake up, wake up, wake up. Invite a friend, share. We got Dr. Marty K. Casey. She's going to be in the house today. This is Relationship Wednesday. We talk about what it looks like to, to be a mother, to be a wife, to be a community leader, an activist, to think about all the roles that you play and how important it is to fill up your cup as well. And you know, a lot of our cups are either half full or half empty, but we're going to try to bring some peace to, to the space. Okay. Y'all hear this song? Y'all know music is therapy. And we got the right person today because she's going to bring it for us. She's going to bring some, some music to our soul. And the language is going to be strong. So make sure you fill your cups up, ladies and gentlemen. We can't do it alone. Woo! Uh, so, yes, everybody, good morning, good morning. I see you all. I'm so glad that we're all showing up. I see that Ellie is working from home today. And yes, we do have a lot to share. We do. We have so much that's going on. And, you know, I really, I constantly talk about the fact that we, we started this platform for us to be able to talk about something every day and just be able to grab our cups and say, hey, what is going on in our community and how can we fill our cup and, and, and not allow it to be empty? But we keep having challenges over and over again. And you know what? They're not going to stop. And so we got to talk about it. We really do. So I'm so glad that we're all here. Good morning, Abby. Everybody just share, share, share. I know for a fact that Wednesdays can be hard. I'm looking out my window now. It's raining. If you all know, I'm a soul flower sister. So I like when it rains because it means that we all grow. And I think that we have to always remember that in the midst of negativity, you got to bring the light. You got to bring the positivity. And so welcome. I hope your cups are full. My cup is a little bit empty. Matter of fact, it's really empty. Um, physically, figuratively, 
empty, but literally I've, I made it half full because whew, we got so much to talk about. But you know what? I'm going to bring in our guests because I don't want to keep you guys long. And we do have a lot to talk about. So everybody, it, this is a great time for you to share. You don't want anyone to miss this because this is a message that we need to sip slowly. We always say sip. Sip is uh, shelter in place. But now it's time for us to talk about what silence looks like. So everybody, welcome Dr. Marty K. Casey. Oh, my gosh. Good morning. Good morning, Queen. How are you doing? Oh, man. I, you know, I would like to say I'm, I'm amazing. I'm doing great. I'm glad that I'm alive today. But there's some people that are not. And that's what's making my cup so empty. But the fact yes. that you're in this space. You're bringing some peace, peace. Amen. At the door. Let me tell you guys something. She, she's so, she's so humble. She has, if you all see in her signature line, Marty K. Casey, she's Dr. Dr. Marty K. Casey. She's a peace ambassador and we love you. You're one of our own STL women that are constantly pouring into our cup. So thank you for sharing and being with us. Tracy, first of all, thank you so much for having me, but even more so, thank you for creating a platform that allows us to come together to be able to speak about these things that we are all so emotionally drained from right now. And if there's any place that I feel secure to talk about this, especially coming out of St. Louis, uh, post Ferguson and, and all these, uh, you know, other events that have taken a uh, place across the globe, I'm so secure being here with you today. So thank you for having me. Thank you. Thank you. And so for everyone wondering, like, so Marty K. Casey, Relationship Wednesday, originally um, I brought her on because she has encountered some things that um, a lot of us have felt from a distance and maybe close up and personal uh, with COVID. And we're going to talk about that a little later. Um, but we cannot address what's happening in our world today. Yeah. Um, yesterday, I was on your on your feed, Marty, and one of the quotes that you said is that silence is violence. Yeah. That's a cup. That's something for us to sip on right there. Oh, um, yeah. We get ready to bring some T-shirts out on that and everything. Uh, you know, God gave that to me yesterday. And when I said it, I felt something even in my own spirit, just speaking that out loud. And, and, and what I'm asking everyone who's tuning in right now to actually right now with me, say that out loud. Silence is violence. Yes. yes. You should feel something. We have to speak up. When we sit back and we see something and we say nothing, we do nothing. And when we don't do anything, everything remains the same. And, and, and I don't know about you, but the meaning that I, I take in for being crazy is that we continue to do the same things and we're looking for a different result. And so therefore, that's a, you know, th th that's a crazy mental space that we must climb out of. We got to get out of that today. Speak up. Say something. Do something today. Ooh. You know, that's something that's so powerful. This, when you do the same thing over and over again, it is insanity. It is mm -hmm. insanity. And we don't mm -hmm. get results. And mm -hmm. so we have to look at what does this, this new normal look like? Because this is not, this should not be our normal. We should not be desensitized to it. And so often, you know, I, I know that people do get desensitized. We see so much crime and violence on television. People are like, please don't share this. Please, I don't want to talk about this. I need to tap out. It's too heavy. But at the end of the day, even if you can't speak it out loud, you know that your inner voice is saying something is not okay. As, mm -hmm. as a partner, as a wife, you know, as, as a woman, and as, as a woman, as a black woman, but as a woman in a country that I feel that that is mine in a community that we have dealt with so many struggles, um, like you said, post Ferguson, that these are triggers that mm. continue to happen. We are being triggered. This is trauma that we are being triggered over and over and over, over and over again. again. Yeah, you know, those, those wounds are being picked at. They are truly being picked at. We can't. We have not healed. First of all, let me just be honest. We haven't healed since slavery. Okay. <sighs> And then you bring us to where we are right now with everything we are continuously dealing with. It is, it, it, I mean, how much 
do you expect a person to be able to take? And hurting people hurt people. And one of the things, Tracy, and, and, and some may not be in agreement with me, but this is this is what I have witnessed. Hurting people hurt people, and therefore you usually hurt the people closest to you. And that's why you see so much black on black crime, because those who are down on, on, on a level, if you will, that's closest to us are our own kind. We're being hurt by the government. We're being hurt in our own city. We're being hurt by other um, institutions and organizations. And so therefore, in order for us to uh, exit our hurt, if you will, I've got, I'm not, you know, it's got to come out because whatever I'm digesting, I have to also release it. So who am I going to hurt? If everybody hurt me from the top down, then who am I going to hurt? I got to hurt the brother or the sister next to me because it's got to come out. So when yes, you see you're so much, right. yeah. So when you see so much black on black crime, that is one of the reasons that that is happening. So what we have to do, we have to stop the hurt from the top. We got to fix it all. We got to go all the way up to the top. I hear people saying right now, why are we being so um, vocal about what's happening in Minnesota right now when we have crime in our own city? Baby, come on, let's just be real about that thing. We got crime in our own homes. We got crime in our own lives. Some of us are committing suicide. There is, when you, you, you hurt whoever you can, and sometimes it's self. So it's self-inflicted. And you, you, are, you are so on the dime. You are so on the dime because... We hurt people, hurt people. And oftentimes we try to run away from it. We're like, I don't want to deal with this. You know, we have to think about how some people, um, the different ways that we deal with trauma, fight, flight, freeze. And a lot of people fight, you know, yeah. it's an internal fight or it's an external fight. And so we have so many different challenges within our communities. And that's why we have to continue to to come together and talk about these issues and come up with a solution. Mm -hmm. Layla said um, earlier, I've been looking at these posts. She says, I hear what you're saying. And I feel what you're saying. I woke up and I said, justice is not justice. But you know, this is the thing. Oftentimes, mm -hmm. Eliana said we were just talking about this and, and it is self-inflicted. And the thing about it is this, we can't always look for other people to solve the solutions that we have to deal with within our own space. You know, Honey, I'm, th I'm throwing hearts up for you right now. Yes. Say that Thank again, please. We, because we, we as a community, we have so much strength. We have so much leadership. We have so much compassion for everyone else that we have to wrap that compassion around ourselves. You know, um, another thing that you said, wait a minute, what's in your cup? Are you, you got, are you drinking anything? Yes, I have my cup. I have green tea this morning. All right. All yes. right. Green and my, tea. And my cup, I'm, you know, I'm an Aquarius. You know, I'm that water sign. And that's why we love the rain, Tracy. So in honor of you and I loving the rain, I'm toasting to you right now. Put your cup up. Give me a little toast there. There it is. Click, click. Ooh, click, yeah. click. Okay. All right. So I'm a Pisces. And we just keep swimming, keep swimming, keep swimming. <laughs> Let me tell you about that. I'm so glad that you that you brought that. I, I love <laughs> your backdrop. I believe in your shine. Um, Thank you. We... We have connected on so many different levels. A couple of years ago, we both received the Impact St. Louis Award. And um, it, it's something because we all have an impact on our community. Yes. But the fact that you said um, that you are a water sign and, and that you have to constantly pour into your cup and, you know, that we're soul flower sisters. But another thing that I've heard you talk about, and I believe it so much, is that energy Positive energy breeds more positive energy. So mm -hmm. yeah, we can talk about how hurt people hurt people all day long. And that yeah. is a fact. But positive yeah. energy, it pushes us to birth yeah. something that out of nothing. And mm -hmm. so talk to everybody about what, what that means when you say energy. Uh, what, what does your energy say? What does your energy speak well, to? Well, energy is contagious. And, it, and and so any type of energy is contagious. If you're looking at negative energy, then you're if you're coming into the room, into the space with negative energy, that's what you're going to draw. If you come into the room with positive energy, that is what you're going to draw. And what I love about energy is that it's something that you can feel. It's not even, nothing even has to be said. You just walking in and just even in how you're entering into that space, I can feel, I see it on you. I, um, I can, I, I, I <laughs> you, you back there fist pumping. I love it. But I, and that, and I, me being an actress, Tracy, 
we've learned to speak a language without even um, using words. So I'm a person that I, I really, I pay attention to um, mannerisms. I pay attention to attitude, facial expressions, all of those things. You've already had a conversation with me before you even said hello. And, and so I try to draw, of course, to positive energy. That's a place I have to remain. I was born into negativity. Let me just, can I just be clear about that? I come from a home that I had to survive a dysfunction and in, in, in a, a toxic. And, and, and let me tell you this, let, let me tell you this. I'm, look, I'm looking at the news feeds. I'm sitting back. I had to bring the screen back because I'm taking this all in. <laughs> Melissa says too many times I've witnessed people. She says too many times I've witnessed people who have been affected by negative circumstances that have, that they have witnessed. And that's what you're talking about, that of allow negativity to infect them. Yeah. And what we allow to infect us will eventually kill us if we don't get the proper care. And so when I see those messages, I'm like, yes, Marty, you talk about the trauma that you encountered and how you were able to heal through that. And, and, and it was infecting me. And so, yeah. so in order for me to survive, I had to. I had to flip the switch and I had to go from negative to positive so that now I can be effective. See, when you have been infected, now you should be able to be effective. And that's the reason that I had to switch gears. Woo! You know, a lot of times um, my son, we go into the community that we were raised and my son says, mom, you were so strong. I said, you know what? It wasn't an option to, you know, we had to be strong, but this is what we, I'm glad God is sitting us down so we can really look at the structures that yeah. we have to play. The fact that we may know our neighbors, dogs and cars better than we know each other. You know, Aziza says, I am tired of, of, of there's crime in the communities that we should be upset and demand and end to end police brutality and murders. Like we have to be the voice. We have to, like Melissa said, flip this switch. So, so can I, can I just share a couple of quick little thoughts that I shared mm -hmm. on my feed last night, Tracy, mm -hmm. this is what uh, I want to just read this to you. That's why I write, I take notes because it's sometimes it's a time. To everybody, read. everybody needs to number one, share. And number two, get a piece of paper. I keep my journal. I take my notes all the time. <laughs> we need Absolutely. to so what I am asking right now, I'm asking white people uh, to speak up and I'm asking my black people to stay up. And I want to break that down as to what I mean by that. I need our black people to stay woke. Don't fight anger with anger. Fight it with knowledge. Change the law. Stand in positions of power. Don't settle. Give back. Support others. Unite and create ways to help each other. Stop being negative about every situation and everything that you see. Find the positivity and create and grow from that. White people, your silence is violence. You see this stuff, you need to fix it. Uh, Correct your people, pull the plug, expose them, call them out. No longer supporting them financially is key. And we will support you and stand with you in that space when you create those opportunities for us to do so. And again, it goes back to hurting people, hurt people. The reason that I wanted to, to share that is that we have to create other ways, Tracy, yes. in order to heal people from all of this that we have experienced. This is trauma for everybody. I have some really good white friends, some white family members, and, and, and I would hate to get to a point in a place that we are entering into, um, see that we're in a war, but nobody has declared one. Okay, let me just say that. Okay. We're in okay. one, but okay. nobody has declared it. But once it has been declared, the fight starts instantly. Everybody's going to be out there having to choose what side they're on. And I sit in the space. You sit in the space. Karen Hoffman sit in the space. We all sit in a space where we we want peace. We uh, you know, you you. this is so, so right. You know, you said we need to stand up. We all need to stand up. No, well, we all need to stand up. We all need to speak out. You know, everybody's well, like, oh, I'm already so sorry. Standing, Tracy, we keep getting you knocked know. down. We, we keep standing. We get knocked down, shot down, yeah. keep yeah. we ain't keep back yeah. up. That's that's yeah. that's horrific within itself. Um, but the other piece to this is everybody has a few good friends, you know. But this whole world is so toxic that just a few good is not enough. And and you know you're and 
what people don't understand, you are a peace ambassador for the world. You've traveled yes. the world. Yes. This is not um, something that's infecting just our community. This is no. not a just a SEL this global. This is not a just a Minnesota thing. This is not a just a Florida thing, a, a Kentucky mm -hmm. thing, an Atlanta thing. This is something that is infiltrated our world from, from and it keeps happening. And so as a result of this, we got to figure out what the various platforms look like because everybody's not a protester. Everybody's not a marcher. Everybody's not a fighter. Everybody doesn't know how to pray. Everybody needs to figure out what that thing is for you. We have artists out here. We have musicians out here. We have poets out here. We have writers. We have people mm -hmm. camping mm -hmm. who go out into the communities and, and mm -hmm. shift, shift and stand together. But we cannot, the one thing we all agree on is we cannot be silent. And that's why I, I said to you, we said silence is, is violence. There's a, a internal thing that comes up. You know, I say I'm not desensitized this time. And I'm, look, I am the soul flower sister of peace, yeah. tranquility and authentic, being authentic and all of that. But I watched it with my husband yesterday and there was no tears. There was no tears. And let me tell you why. Because I was angry. I was yes. angry. I was pissed. I, I got angry. I got angry. And I did not like that feeling because it takes a lot for me to get angry. And I've been angry for a long time, but I'm constantly trying to maintain my positivity and find, you know, mm -hmm. a, a, a light in this darkness mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. it don't swallow us up. And I'm being swallowed up yeah it's uh it's really bad if you can imagine you know i'm a person of energy it, it, it just just images just coming from you know being an actress and if you can imagine that right now the whole world is in the hospital and you have some people that's in the hospital and they're recovering and they got visitors coming to see them and then you have some people that's in the emergency room where it they haven't even been seen yet and it's a life or death threatening situation I want you to picture that those who are in the hospital recovering, that might be some white people from the trauma that they've been witnessing and been a part of. But the black people, we're in the emergency room. We haven't even been seen yet. We're bleeding out. So we we have any a life or death situation that we are facing right now. No, we ain't we ain't even been touched by the doctor. We ain't we haven't even begun to be healed and for somebody to come and you're visit up, us. You're breaking it up a little bit, but I, I totally get that message. We all are, are in the we're ER. In the I, I think we're all sitting in the waiting room and 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 ain't nobody seeing us. Ain't nobody asking for our information. They don't want to know our name. They don't, they, they don't even know we're there. They don't even care. They don't even care. But you they know what? Even. We gotta care. We have to care. And the other piece to this is it can't just be conversation. It, it has to reach a, a next space of what those solutions are. And you know, it's 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 it's, it's morning time. And I know that we're like, wow, this is deep. <laughs> we just and, uh, up on you know, we just want to give y'all a cup of what yeah. we're experiencing and um and, and it's a rough, it's a rough road to go. And we we gotta grow from this. Um, I like that you said we are all we are all sick. And and I think that what we have to realize is a lot of this, the majority of this is learned behavior, that there are some people out here that are just hateful for no reason. But it is definitely a learned behavior. We cannot continue to teach hate. And that's why I, I constantly say that I feel and I think a lot of other people feel like like love does heal. You know, love does come from a healing space. I can't love you and want to hurt you. They just don't. They just don't equate. They don't they work. Don't go together. Together. And they so, don't go together. To be able to figure out how to get to that space, um, mm -hmm. then this is this is where where it starts. Um, and I, I and I'm the one to tell you I don't have the solutions. I like to sow seeds and 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 watch things grow around me. But I know that we need to continue to have platforms. And so we're going to definitely continue this conversation. But I wanted to also just to shift a little bit because sure. what brought us to this space is COVID. That's mm -hmm. another piece that's killing us um, daily. Um, and we are, are not waking up and smelling mm -hmm. the coffee and realizing how strong this beast is. You encountered this within your own space. Um, Share your story briefly. Let everybody know what 
what happened with you? Because you wear so many, many hats. And, mm-hmm. you know, when I, when I woke up this morning, I was like, man, I could play I'm Every Woman because you're a <laughs> woman show. I could play, you know, I, so many songs that come to mind when I think of you and all that you do. But the first thing that came to my mind today and why we brought you on the show is because you are a mother. And uh, and that role is the is the first role that we all we, we love and carry because your birth life into this world. So talk to yeah. us about what you encountered uh, a couple of weeks ago, uh, probably now. OK, well, thank you uh, so much. Uh, and, and I want to transition that just a little bit. When you mentioned the word hate, I have to just say this, that that is what I'm calling that other pandemic that we so we're battling two pandemics at one time and that and that is what's keeping us just so you know emotionally drained but when the pandemic of covid-19 hit my home um a couple of wednesdays ago my my let me say it started on mother's day my daughter wasn't feeling well but she has asthma she thought she was just um having you know asthma attack due to all of the the the, the weather that we're experiencing and so for two days she really didn't uh you know go and see about herself she finally on tuesday evening went to urgent care and they they did the swab test and then wednesday while she was picking up a stronger inhaler called in by her doctor she called and she says they just called and told me i'm positive and she says i can come home and quarantine for two weeks or go to the hospital i said oh no baby the hospital's not an option some people not making it back from the hospital and i'm not here pointing fingers placing blame i actually thank all of the first responders that are really really doing their job but i do honestly believe that there's some other things that could be happening and i just didn't want to take that chance with my only child so you know you come home you, you, came said home. My, you said my only child. My you know, only child. The, the other piece to this is we we've had trauma when it can't, comes to hospitals. We're not saying the hospitals don't give great care, um, but I have talked to people. I'm a therapist, you know, and mm-hmm. and for everybody out there, I'm not just out here. We, we, we don't want to traumatize you. If you need a session today, inbox me. I'll give you one. If you need a wellness check, I'll, yeah. I'll give you one today. But we have been traumatized by hospitals and knowing that people come in and they don't come out, you know, um, and that we are people give people vaccines and all kinds of medication. We don't know what's what's in that. And so when you said oh, my baby, you come home, you come home and I will take care of you. I can't imagine being in that space. I, I, I hate that. I, I hate getting so emotional. Um, but what would, what was it about you saying to her come home? Because you also, you have a grandbaby as well. Her only child, my grandson is seven. And I couldn't even imagine him not being able to really uh, talk to his mother in real time. You know, he couldn't get close to her in those two weeks that she was quarantined, but we still were able to have her in the home and he knew she was here. And it it, it took a lot of that, that would have been trauma developing in him. We limited that so much. I made him a part of the process of helping his mother heal. Every half hour <laughs> on the hour, he was like, mommy, do you need anything? And he would set her a bottle of water, girl. We treated her like, uh, what's the uncle? on soul food where they would knock on the door and give him yes, his yes. food outside the door. Yes. <laughs> but look, you do know, wait a minute, wait a minute, but you do know that as a community, <laughs> as a people, we know how to take care of our own. We know how to I take care of our own. At my great grandmother's house, it was always a bed back there where we had an mm-hmm. aunt or a grandmother or somebody that we were nurturing. We our own hospice and we brought folks back to life. You hear me? That's it, that's because it. We are alive. And um, but I also like the fact that you all kept checking in on her because we need to hear each other. That's why we play the music and we feel the energy yes. because we need that to heal. Um, mm-hmm. The mm-hmm. fact that we now have technology, you know, that we yes. can, like like we can go and put our hands up to. Can you imagine the feeling of a grandmother in in a nursing home? And, yeah. and being able to put her hand up to the window of a grandchild, there is energy there. So the fact that your daughter can hear her son running around and saying, "I'm yes. getting out of this," she had to. She she needed to get up. She needed how, to, how that. She needed to be in that space. 
And as a matter of fact, he and I, we play uh, Uno at, all the time. And so sometimes I would FaceTime her just so she could watch us play Uno. And and then, you know, there was times that she would get up when she felt better and she would sit outside and watch him ride his bike, you know, and all of those things. So it all really mattered in, in the space of her being able to uh, fight her way back to the other side here. And uh, so many things that I... Um, I feel like it's necessary to share that we don't have enough time to go over um, here in this space, Tracy, but I am putting together a guide that I will make available to those so that you know how in the, in the name of the guide is COVID-19, 19 things to do at home, yes. 19 things to do at home. And so I want people to know you have, you may have an option and, and don't, I feel like the hospital, when you, if, if you uh, get diagnosed with COVID-19, don't enter into fear and feel like, oh my goodness, it's a death sentence and I have to go to the hospital. This is my only chance to survive this. No, you may have another option. And, and until somebody actually spells that out for you, then, you know, it'll give you the clarity to be able to make a, a decision that's best for you. So, uh, just quickly, Robert said it was Uncle Pete. That it was Uncle Pete. Uncle on the Pete, show. yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, Shamim talked about yesterday. We talked about we have to look at the fact that kind of address everybody has it. So, if everybody has it, then we're going to look at it differently. We're going to make sure that we wear our mask. We're going to make sure that we wash our hands constantly. We're going to make sure that we wear gloves when we go into spaces. And as a community, social distancing is hard for us. Mm -hmm. So maybe it did not always be called social distancing, but more of physical distancing. You know, there's mm -hmm. something back in the day we tell people, give me 50 feet. Like I will snap right. on you. But I'm right. not asking for 50 feet. I'm asking for six feet. I'm asking for... Just, just mm -hmm. give me some space. Mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. that also will calm us all a lot. You know, the fact that you ain't up on me because I don't like this ain't a time for people to be. <laughs> this ain't a time to be up on me, but to yeah. be able to uh, realize the coming together of each other. There's something else that you spoke to. I can't wait for this COVID nineteen um, to uh, book to come out. Um, but you talked about. I love it that your grandson is, is, is there. How old is your grandson? Seven. Seven. He's seven. He's seven. Okay, so so now so you're teaching yes. competition and stuff. So you don't let him win when it comes to Uno. Like you better beat him so he can know that grandma don't oh, play. Oh no, baby, I'm serious. <laughs> oh no, I'm I'm real serious with that thing. I'm serious. <laughs> Um, but what, what, what I don't care nothing about his feelings when it comes to Uno. Let me tell you something that I, I love about that message. I, I'm a my mom was a teen mom, and um, we all have our struggles and our stories. Um, but one of the things that that I did a lot of being an only child is I played games a lot by myself. You all know how I am about journaling. I journaled all the time. My mama was like, you know what? You keep making up all this stuff, get a book and write about it. But then the other piece about that was coming together with my cousins who were like my sisters and brothers, because you know, we all lived in the house together with my grandmother and we played games and we had puzzles. And, you know, I think that that's so important that we constantly have these things that we can that we can bring each other together. In my mm -hmm. house, we always had puzzles, and and um, I feel that those culturally relevant materials are are so important. But we could talk forever. But <laughs> what I want to know is, in the midst of creating this COVID nineteen, is that what is the most important thing that you that you discovered about this? Um, I, I, how is she doing today? How is your daughter today? Oh, she's fine. She's recovered. But what I, one of the things that I just found out, uh, St. Louis, St. Louis County Health Department contacted me yesterday to, because we came in contact with her. And so now we have to quarantine for two weeks and it starts for us uh, today. So now we're in quarantine for two weeks. And I'm like, but we was quarantining when she was quarantining. They said that doesn't count. It happens after the fact. Wow. And I know. So I didn't know that. And I'm sure a lot of people probably are not aware of that as well. So if you are caring for someone, understand that two weeks of your life was also going to to then uh, right after that, you have to quarantine yourself away from population. So I, I see, like you know what? We all angry about this situation. Um, 
I see Robert says, what angers me the most is people are deliberately ignoring the safety protocols. Um, trifling folks in the Ozark. You know what? Let me tell you something. It's trifling folks all around us that's ignoring protocols. And, and we have to understand that it's going to get worse before it gets mm -hmm. better. Mm -hmm. Um, That's why I'm kind of concerned right now, Tracy, with what's happening in Minnesota as they're protesting. I truly understand why. But when you still look at it, that they're not six feet distancing and everybody doesn't have on a mask, you're still looking at a population of people that could possibly infect each other, even though they're standing up in the moment for a purpose that's so much greater than just hanging out at the Ozarks. So I was like, you know, we have to get a message to them and maybe there's a way that they can uh, structure themselves and be more in a, a army like formation. But, you know, you are. That's good. That's good. Army like formation. Keep keep talking on that. Yeah, I was thinking more like an army like formation and, and spread themselves across the across their city. You know, if if their if their game plan and their um their message is to we're gonna shut down businesses and we're gonna we're gonna impact this situation uh economically, then put four people in front of each business, but spread out and don't just gather in that type of grouping because you still yes. right now you in a pan you you fighting two pandemics right now. You fight yes. the pandemic of AIDS. It's, it's war, it's war, it's war on our it's war. We're just it's we're war. in a war, period. Yes. Let's just say that. And we don't want to lose those soldiers in the middle of the pandemic of COVID-19. Yes. Yeah. But I also think that we have to be more strategic and what that looks like. And so we got to model that. Um, our president ain't modeling it. Um, we got to model it. We have to be the model. And so we have to show people what that looks like for us. What does six feet look like? And be consistent with it. I know that the one thing that we needed growing up, I know that I needed and, and I try to enforce this with parents is we got to be the models. So it, we got to be the model of what we want our communities to look like, whether that's social distancing, whether that's, you know, um, creating an army of, 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 of uh, inclusivity where everybody feels connected. We have to build what these human circles look like where we can all come together. And so I, I thank you for that. I, I know we don't we, we, we can't be on here forever, but I do want to ask you a question because this is Relationship Wednesday and everybody, you know, that we normally put in at the bottom. Uh, what is our affirmation of the day? But I have a different question of the day. Um, and um, I, I saw this again, Marty. I'm doing my homework. <laughs> um, one of the questions that I saw that you asked one day was, What is the best quality? What is your best quality in your business and personal relationships? What is your best quality? So what I'm asking everybody is one word that you feel, because this is inter perspective. In, in this is on your now. You got to own your now. OK, I'm, I'm, I'm asking you to own your now. What is the one word that you feel? Not what everybody else feels, because we're talking about relationships. It starts with self and then it just it, it ripples out. But what is the one word that you feel that you bring to your personal and professional relationships? And as you share, everybody else is going to share that one word. And I'm going to write those words down. So what word? Tell us your one word, Marty, and why you chose that word. OK, so I, I don't I want to follow the rules, Tracy, but I have to be honest. One of the things that I've learned is that we can think something about ourselves, but until you ask others what they think about you. That's going to be the homework see, assignment. That's going to be the homework I, assignment. <laughs> because they see you, they see you in a reflection in a way that you don't even see in yourself. And, what, and so I can give you my word of what I think about myself, but the word that shows up all the time, if you ask somebody about me, they're go it's going to hands down always come back that I'm authentic. And so I've learned to accept that because if that's the way that I show up and that's what people receive, I am going to walk in that and I'm going to always be aware of that. So I'm all about being authentic. Man, you know what? That goes a long way, don't it? And the it thing does. about that is we have to be consistent and we have to be consistent. I'm throwing these words up here because everybody's putting them in and it's beautiful. <laughs> to see Yay. that we all can grow from these words. We all can 
can get together and, and show people what this looks like. I'm seeing Cheryl said longevity. We we got to be consistent, don't we? Unity. Look yes. at them. I love it. I love it. I, I love, love it. it. And thank and thank you all for tuning in this morning. I hope um, that I, uh, we have had a conversation that's been helpful to you all this morning. And yeah. Tracy, I, again, I, I love how, you know, you and I, me, you and Candace, when we've had our, our moments of being able to come together, because we're stronger together. You know, they say better together, but I, I say there's, you know, there's strength in numbers, there's power in numbers. And so I'm not trying to be better. I'm, tr I'm trying to be stronger. I'm trying to survive. And so we are stronger together. And you know what, um, Melissa Buckles, I'm always talking to her about different things. And she talks about how we are so used to uh, struggling and, and, and surviving that when do we get to thrive? Like, what does thrive look like for us? You, well, know? you know what? It's, it's definitely on its way. You know, I said something earlier today. I said, you know, we, we have to get to a place where in this and this is who you are. I feel like you own the word define. You know, I define me. I'm like, that's Tracy. When I hear somebody say that, I'd be like, that's Tracy's uh, saying. You can't say that. <laughs> but I, well, what, but what I, I love I, is that we are able to define ourselves at this is this particular time in history. I don't want my grandson or my great 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 grandchildren to come back and look at. Oh, my grandmother just sat down, didn't say anything. All that went on around her and she had not no voice. I didn't I couldn't find nothing in the history books of her showing up to, to say anything about what was happening in the world. That's not going to be my story. I'm defining. See, I always keep in mind my legacy in everything that I do. And that's playing a game of chess. When you play in chess, you got to think of your three moves that's coming up, not just the one you making in the moment. When you playing checkers, you ain't got to think at all. You just jump wherever you feel like you need to jump. And if you playing connect four, that ain't even worth playing. So, right. I, <laughs> so I want to tell people right now, I need them to, if we, because we love games, Tracy. We water signs. We love music. We love poetry, songs, and all of that. I want to bring them in. I want to tell them, I challenge you to join Tracy and I playing a game of chess because that's what we playing right now. We on our next three moves. We ain't just thinking about what we doing right, right now in this moment. I said right. that we ain't. We ain't. We ain't just thinking yes. about what we're doing right now. Now. Please, now, now, now. Right now. Please let everybody know how they can find you. You have your Marty moments. You know, this is all about us creating various platforms because yes. we need it morning. We need it afternoon. We reshare this in the afternoon so people can replenish their cut. We need it at night. We need it every yeah. single day. Let Me everybody too. know how they can find your information. Well, yes, I, I really want you all to connect with me uh, on uh, moments with Dr. Marty. That's a private group. Well, it's not a private group. It's a public group. But you will have to uh, send a request to join because I want you to make that choice to say you want to be a part of that village and that circle of receiving information. And what that's all about, I use my life experiences, my moments in time in life to as an example to teach life lessons today and uh i um i welcome you to come and join me on that platform i'm also on all all social media platforms as marty k casey now what you may see on my private page is totally different what we do in in that space um you know i try to to, to show up as dr marty that's in right i am authentic i'm gonna keep it real <laughs> and you're gonna have to understand that there ain't no other me that can be me but me <laughs> so uh, my song to you everybody thank you so much thank you marty i thank have you. a word i'm gonna try to wrap them up but um oh, i have to say this tracy real quick you know i have a one woman show about my life which is it's not a man's world. And so when things open back up, I'm looking to, to, to come and be booked and, and perform that in spaces as well. Thank That's you. right. Because wait a minute, we were taking off. Both of us went, went to New York this year. Like everything was just yes. going great. And then, you know, COVID shut it down. But you know what? You can't shut down a person's voice. You cannot silence. No, no, you can't. Thank you. Everybody say bye. Thank you so bye. much. This has been amazing. I just want to say, look, we made it today. It, my a smile is on my face. My my cup is full. Look, Marty.
I'm playing I'm every woman because you are every woman. And um, you know, from A to Z, A to Z, y'all hear that? <laughs> so this is how I'm gonna wrap up. I got all of everybody's words. I just want to thank you all. She left you guys with a challenge. We need to play a game. I don't know what game you guys are gonna play, but either you're gonna learn some chess or some Uno or some speed or or a puzzle or something. Get in there and do that thing. Um, so I'm going to start off with my, Marty's word, and her word was authenticity. It is so important that we show up and show people what authenticity looks like, but also be allowed to be a nurturer. And when you are a nurturer, you can listen to each other and others will see what it means to be loyal. Be loyal to yourself, to your national and global communities, but also understand that this is a relational thing. Because when we come together, we can see the transparency of what longevity looks like when we all can live in a community and grow and thrive. So understand that this is what unity looks like. L-O-V-E, love, listen, observe, validate, and empower, but be determined to understand that we can encourage one another with this flexibility of understanding that things are going to continue to change. So be open to it, be enriched, and understand that when we have hope and kindness and love, we can overcome it all. We can overcome it all. Do not silence yourselves. Make sure that you speak up and stand up because silence is violence. And we need to understand that it is time for us to continue to open ourselves up and own your now. Thank you guys for today. It has been an amazing day. I hope that your cup is full. I will see you all tomorrow, same time and same space. Peace.